So my question is this, what if Costa Coffee suddenly started offering 50 pence lattes? Or what if Bud Light sold 50 cent beers? Would those values-based boycotts continue? Or would value for money begin to triumph there too? In this economy, I don't think anyone any of us should be attacked for buying whatever we can afford. Ignore the culture wars, things are hard enough. Enjoy the savings where you can make them. Joining me to discuss all of this, Talk TV presenter Richard Tice and political journalist Ava Santina. Thank you to you both. Also joined by Chris Rhodes, founder and CEO of Veeps. This new shopping app we were just talking about promises to help shoppers find brands that align with their values. Chris, thanks for making time for us. Just start off very simply by telling us how the app works. Sure. Yeah, the, the Veebs app is designed to make it effortless to shop based on your on your values. The way it works is you download the app, you get the ninety nine cent per month subscription. Uh, you load up the value pack that most aligns with what you you know your interests are. Um, there's seven to choose from, and then you're ready to shop. You go to the store, you scan the product you're thinking about buying. Veebs returns a value score from one to hundred based on that company's uh, values. Uh, and, and the ones that you chose, then you're able to say that's good or it's not good. If it's too low, Veebs offers some alternatives that might fit you better. You can look at those alternatives, choose, do I want A or do I want B? Pick the one you want, put it in the cart and you move on to the next thing. It makes it easy, it makes it, you know, you use your normal shopping routine and most importantly, we keep everything updated so you don't have to be digging down internet rabbit holes all day. And you're not targeting any side in particular, are you, in this? You're looking at all ends of the spectrum from liberal to conservative. So in terms of the data that you've picked up on so far, the users, as far as I know, it's only based in the US so far, your app. Um, what are you noting from that? Do you find it's more liberals or more conservatives using it? Yeah, so we haven't done a ton of marketing yet. So we don't have a marketing campaign to really count against. So it's really been very news cycle driven so far. And we see spikes in all seven uh, different value packs that we have uh, based on kind of what's happening in the news. So far, we've seen, you know, based over the last month that we've been on the market, it's obviously been a big month for conservative news stories. We've seen a lot of conservative uptake. Um, that's definitely the majority, but we see spikes here and there of, of all seven. Do you get on board with the argument I've been making that the companies are basically just exploiting everyone at this point in the pursuit of just making a quick buck, whether it be left or right, everyone involved is just being exploited? I don't think everybody, I don't think every instance of values uh, signaling is exploited. Um, but I think there are certainly companies that are trying to jump on that bandwagon and uh, gain market share or or whatever based on uh, you know, a value story that, that they may or may not be, be wholeheartedly believing in. Um, so, yes, there's some of that going on. I do think, you, you know, you don't necessarily have to make a decision, either values or savings. Um, you just need the right data to make the decision. Um, and so that's kind of what we we're trying to offer at Veebs is the ability to go to your regular store, your regular aisle, choose a you know, product based on your values. We know the pricing will be more or less similar in, a, in the same aisle and um, hopefully you can buy on your conscience but also um, you know save money that's a dream isn't it give people the choice to make those informed decisions whether it be based on value or values uh, let's come to the panel chris stay with us we'll come back to you but uh, you were listening to that richard and ava quite fascinating isn't it would you use the app i love it i mean that is the american dream isn't it it's free market forces working out their best Chris, he's identified a space in the market and he's basically, with a subscription base, he's gone in the middle. He says, which do you want? And it'll be fascinating to see how it goes. My question to Chris is, when's it coming to the UK? Because, look, I've this, only this week, I've stopped buying Costa Coffee. I put a tweet out there. Yeah, I just think they, they've suffered. So they haven't exploited people. They've made a terrible mistake, just like Bud Light did, and they're paying the price for it. And, you know, that's what happens with boards. You make decisions, you make mistakes, they'll learn from it. So you make your values-based decisions in shopping. You've decided to boycott Costa. When it I know you're an investor, you're a businessman as well. Have you ever invested in companies that have links to, for example, arms manufacturing, nope. tobacco? <laughs> no. So you've made values-based decisions on that side as well. I, I, actually, in fairness, I don't think I've ever been presented with an opportunity, but I, I'm, a, I'm a real estate guy, I'm a property guy. So no, mm. I focus on what I know. And Look, I just think that uh, lots of companies recently, they've tried to virtue signal it. You saw it with Coots. Mm. They've made some terrible mistakes. But equally, what you don't hear about is the smart companies, 
that focus on looking after what actually the customer wants, a good product at a competitive price. Fundamentally, that I think is what most people want at any time of a cycle, in particular, when money's really, really tight. We will go back to Chris and ask him whether he fancy setting up in the UK once he hears this conversation. Maybe I'll be his but... franchise. <laughs> he might be put off. <laughs> Ava, coming to you uh, on this. I mean, exploitative, that's what worries me about the Costa Coffee side of things when it comes to trans people and the way they're being represented. The Dylan Mulvaney case in particular, uh, that person, that individual, she felt that she was left by the company, abandoned. Yeah, I mean, well, she was abandoned because that, that campaign blew up completely out of proportion. It was never meant to be an ad campaign. It was a little bit of sponsored content that went way out of the, you know, way out of the water. And it means that people like Richard and I were talking about it on panels in a way that I don't think Dylan expected and I don't think Bud Light did either. I'd like to go back a little bit, though, to your point about veganism earlier. Mm. I, I think that the reason that Beyond, Ma Beyond Meat are failing is because the product is not very good. I've been a vegetarian for nearly 20 years now. I mean, I don't go after products because they are virtue signaling or because they are, you know, well packaged. I go after them because they're healthy. And a lot of the alternatives that have come out in the past few years aren't. So it doesn't matter if you put a trans flag on there. If it's not healthy, I'm not going to eat it. What do you make of all the sort of uh, politicisation of corporate products and food products in the time of what we're calling a cost of living crisis, where people are strapped anyway. Do you think people feel judged for their decisions in the supermarket? Um, I think that people should feel judged, but <laughs> not in the supermarket. I think you can look at, you know, companies like Shell and BP, who have been greenwashing for the past 10 years. So these huge oil companies that make these big ad campaigns claiming that they are environmentally friendly and therefore you should go and fill up your car there. That's where our concern should be. Not a tiny little coffee company like Costa, which I'm sorry, that little sign that showed a double mistectomy. I mean, I could care It was less. grotesque, it was abusive, it was exploitative. Oh, it was the most revolting thing I can think I've seen oh, in an advertising ridiculous. campaign. Why were you... Celebrating the mutilation of healthy breasts. Awful. Why were you so offended, Richard? I was offended because I just thought it was awful. Uh, my other half, Isabel, was appalled by it. And we just told it as we see it. And I think that, I think Costa will deeply regret that. Were you offended, Ava? Not at all. Not at all. And also, there's no indication to show that that is supposed to be a depiction of someone who is trans. That what else is be, it? That could just be someone who has had a double mastectomy, which is quite common. I, j I really don't mind that at all. I just don't think that the coffee there is very good. That's why I don't go there, <laughs> That's personally. That's but, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, let's bring that up, because a lot of these high street coffee chains at the moment are also under fire for passing on a lot of these high input costs, as we call them, inflation, onto the customer. You go and buy a coffee in a pastry, it's costing you just shy of 10 quid here in London, you know somewhere around the Where £67 are you pound right. mark. <laughs> I'm talking about the main ones, I won't name them. Uh, uh, you know, if, if, and, and if they're also pushing values as well, do you think they're essentially going to lose consumers over? I don't know. I think it actually might be a way to get consumers to go there. I and mean, if you look at Starbucks, for example, the main reason that young teenage girls go there is because they like the photograph with their coffee. I mean, if this is something that you align yourself with, if you're a big believer in the LGBT you know, community and movement and you want to be a part of it, then great. Get your consumers that way. Richard just won't go. I won't go there, but I go to uh, I go to Pretz because what, it's better value. That's what I just yeah. you know I'm a subscriber and I'm looking for value for money. That's what I'm really focused well, on, as well as quality. I'd love us to have a conversation about the sort of exploitation that goes on abroad. Okay, so if you look at fast fashion, you look at where we're getting coffee from, mm. where these companies are bringing in their products. Yeah, but the, but the that hypocrisy would be a really good conversation to have. It would be because actually the hypocrisy of many people, young people who buy clothes, wear it once and then ditch it because it's so cheap, fast fashion. Yeah. But, you know, they're exploiting uh, people in developing countries who are being paid an absolute pittance. If you pull the thread on most things in this studio, what we're wearing, everything we eat and breathe, you can almost always find abuse along the chain. Uh, I think making people more aware of it, of course, and allowing them to make informed decisions. Speaking of which, let's go back to Chris, who's developed this app, Veebs, which does allow people to make these values-based choices when it comes to these kind of culture war issues. Chris, you had a chance to listen to that debate here in the studio amongst a couple of Brits talking about values and shopping. Are you uh, yeah. enticed to bring your app over here? Absolutely. Uh, we've gotten a ton of uh, interest from Great Britain and Australia in particular, a little bit from the rest of Europe, and, and we definitely are looking uh, at, at those as our first geographic expansions. Um, we want to have you know more products, more customers here uh, as we build a foundation, but uh, there is a lot of enthusiasm for this uh, from Great Britain in particular. Chris, can I just ask you what strikes you as um comparatively between the US sort of culture that's going on with regards to products and shopping and the UK as well. Do you think they're similar or do you think that Britain is different to the US in any way? Um, I, you know, I think they are relatively uh, similar, to be honest with you, um, in a lot of ways in, in that there's 
kind of two sides. There's, there's a, you know, maybe um, each side calling hypocrisy on, on a, a number of things. Um, I think it's a little bit of a different starting point. Um, you know, Great Britain and the U.S. have uh, you know a different kind of cultural foundation, and with Brexit, that's a kind of a big uh, turning point maybe in, in Britain that we we didn't have as much here that makes it a little bit different. But mm -hmm. there's people who want to shop on their values. There's people who want to um, make their dollar or pound go as far as it possibly can while buying on their conscience, and you know we want to address that need. Chris Rhodes of Veebs. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing the app when it lands here in the UK. Best of luck.